In this game that won a brilliancy prize, Aaron Nimzovich carried out one of the greatest and most extraordinary knight maneuvers in chess history. Just in four moves, the passive knight evolved into a great attacking piece. After that, Nimzovich found a very original way of transforming his bad bishop into a very active piece, and under the tremendous pressure of these pieces, his opponent's position immediately collapsed. Nimzovich played the English opening, c4, and his opponent, Akiba Rubinstein, played c5. Knight f3, knight f6, knight c3, d5, c takes d, knight takes d5, and e4 immediately attacking the knight, but weakening the d3 square. However, it turns out that the weakening of this square isn't so dangerous for white. Knight b4, it seems that black has created a very unpleasant threat, namely knight d3 check. However, Nimzovich simply ignores this threat and develops his light squared bishop. And it turns out that knight d3 check wouldn't give black any advantage, because of simple king e2, attacking the knight twice, and for example, after knight f4 check, Attacking the pawn, white can simply play king f1, defending the pawn, and white will play d4 next move, occupying the center and attacking the knight. That's why, in this position, instead of knight d3 check, Rubinstein played e6. Nimzovich castled kingside, knight c6, and d3. Now the knight won't be able to jump on d3 anymore. And that means white is threatening to play a3, and the only square to retreat for the knight would be a6. And in this case, white would be able to simply exchange on a6, black would be forced to capture with the b-pawn, and that would completely destroy black's pawn structure on the queen side. That's why Rubinstein played knight d4, vacating the c6 square for the b4 knight. However, this lets Nimsovich solve his main problem, namely the problem of the backward pawn on d3. At the moment, it's placed on the half-open d-file, and black can exert pressure on this pawn. But, after knight takes d4, it turns out that black cannot capture with the queen in order to keep the d-file open, because of simple knight b5, which would attack the queen and threaten knight c7 check with a fork. And after queen d8, bishop f4, white would renew the threat, would develop the bishop with tempo, and white's initiative would be simply devastating. That's why Rubinstein captured with the pawn. However, now the pawn is closing the d-file, and black wouldn't be able to exploit the weakness of the d3 pawn anymore. Nimzovich played knight e2, as his knight is under attack, so knight e2, and again created an immediate threat, namely bishop b5 check, and after bishop d7, the bishop would close the queen's way, and the pawn on d4 would be unguarded, and white would simply capture on d4, and the knight would defend the bishop on b5. That's why Rubinstein played a6, preventing bishop b5 check. And Nimsovich plays knight g3. Bishop d6, preparing the short castle, and f4. Nimsovich starts his pawn storm on the king side. Rubinstein castles king side, queen f3, and king h8. So Rubinstein wants to play f5 in order to prevent white from playing f5. But before doing that, it's important to make a prophylactic move to move the king away from the light squared bishop's diagonal. Nimzovich plays bishop d2, continues his development, opening the rook, rook's way to e1, and now f5. Rook e1. So Nimzovich is going to double his rooks on the e file, as this file is going to open, to be opened sooner or later. Knight c6, rook e2, queen c7, e takes f. E takes f, and we have reached the critical position. So, the knight on g3 isn't really doing much, and Nimsovich now starts his phenomenal knight maneuver. You can pause the video and try to find it. I will just give you a small tip. Find a square on which the knight would be ideally pl placed and would ideally uh, coordinate with the queen and the light squared bishop and will create deadly threats to the black king. And then find a very original way to reroute the knight to that square. So, that square is g5, because white is going to play queen h5, and the knight from g5, together with the queen, will uh, create immediate checkmating threats. Besides that, from g5, the knight would ideally coordinate with the light squared bishop. It will threaten knight f7 check and also invasion on e6. 
But how to reroute the knight uh, to g5? Nemsovich finds how to do it. Knight h1. So placing the knight uh, to the corner of the board, which at first sight doesn't make sense. However, if we see the idea, it makes perfect sense. Knight f2, knight h3, and finally knight g5. And there is nothing black can do to prevent this maneuver. So Rubinstein plays bishop d7, opening his rook's way to e1 in order to ease uh, white's pr pressure on the e-file. Knight f2, Nemsovich continues his knight maneuver. Rook e8, rook e1, a pair of rooks are exchanged. And it turns out that black cannot make a natural move, rook e8, in order to exchange the second pair of rooks because of very strong queen d5. And it turns out that black cannot capture the rook because of queen g8 checkmate. Besides that, white is threatening to capture on e8 himself, followed by queen g8 checkmate. That's why, of course, Rubinstein didn't play rook e8. Instead, he played knight d8 in order to defend the weak squares. And Nimsovich continues his maneuver. Knight h3. Now the knight is just one move away from the cherished square. Bishop c6, attacking the queen. And queen h5, of course. Now very unpleasant knight g5 is coming. And white will create checkmating threats. g6, attacking the queen. Queen h4. And king uh, g8. And now Nimsovich found another great move. He writes in his annotations that black's king side is still uh, isn't weakened enough and it's important to distract one of its defenders uh, to the queen side and that defender is the bishop as you see the dark squared in black's position are weakened but the bishop can defend these squares but Nimtsovich plays queen f2 attacking the pawn and black must defend it so rubinstein played Bishop c5, defending the pawn, but now b4, and the bishop must move to b6. And now the bishop cannot participate in the defense of the king side anymore. And that means the dark squares would be catastrophically weakened. And now that the queen finished its mission successfully, the bishop is uh, kicked away from the king side, now it returns to h4. And again, white is threatening knight g5 creating immediate checkmating threats. So Rubinstein plays rook e8 and Nimtsovich didn't want to exchange because that would ease the pressure on the e-file. And he found a very strong move, rook e5, keeping his rook on the e-file as the rook was under attack. Of course, black was threatening to capture on e2. And after rook e5, it turns out that black cannot actually capture the rook because after rook takes e5, f takes e, the f pawn would be very strong, white would create immediate threats, and black cannot capture the pawn because of immediate checkmate. Queen h6 check, and if king f6, then bishop g5 checkmate, and if king h8, then queen f8 checkmate. And it turns out that as white is threatening very unpleasant knight g5, black cannot prevent it by playing h6 in order to take under control the g5 square because of very strong g4, completely destroying the king side. It turns out that in this case, black wouldn't be able to capture on g4, because after this, the pawn, the f pawn would be unblocked, and white would simply play f5, opening the bishop's diagonal, and threatening deadly queen takes h6. And after queen takes e5, f6 check, luring the queen to f6, after queen takes f6, the king wouldn't be able to move to f6 anymore. And queen takes h6 would simply be checkmate. That's why, in order to prevent knight g5, Rubinstein played knight f7, taking under control the g5 square. However, now Nimsovich simply eliminates the defender of uh, g5 and exchanges his bishop for the knight. And after queen takes f7, knight g5 attacking the queen and also h7. The only move is queen g8 in order to defend the h7 pawn. Now Nimtsovich exchanges on e8 and after bishop takes e8, queen e1. So now it turns out that there is nothing black can do to prevent the invasion of the queen. Queen e5, queen e7, 
is threatened and there is nothing black can do against it. Rubinstein plays bishop c6, queen e7 check. Now, if king h6, then of course knight e6, taking under control the g7 square and threatening queen g5 checkmate or even queen h4 checkmate. That's why after queen e7 check, Rubinstein played king h8, but now the final blow. So the queen and the knight are extremely active. And the only piece which isn't doing anything is the dark squared bishop. It's very bad. It's limited by its own pawns. But now, after playing b5, the bishop comes into play with great effect. b5 vacated the b4 square for the bishop. And the bishop, of course, will come into play and uh, the weakened, the, the catastrophe on the weakened dark squares would be inevitable. So, b5 attacked the bishop, uh, and it turns out that the bishop cannot capture on b5 because of simple queen f6 check, and that's the double attack. And the bishop would fall after queen g7, simply queen takes b6. And if a takes b, then knight e6, threatening terrible queen f6 check, followed by queen g7, queen takes g7 checkmate. That's why h5, but queen f6 check, king h7. Knight g5 check, king h6, and bishop b4, threatening deadly bishop f8, and followed by checkmate. And there is nothing black can do in order to prevent the invasion of the dark squared bishop. That's why Rubinstein simply played queen g7 in order to exchange the queens, but his bishop is still under attack. And after the exchange of the queens, of course, Nimsovich simply captured the bishop. And after b takes c, it turns out that white is simply a piece up. And after a few moves, Rubinstein resigned. And now I recommend watching the 14th game of the 1951 World Championship match, in which the world champion Mikhail Batvinnik carried out a phenomenal knight raid into the enemy territory and destroyed his opponent's kingside. But first, like this video and subscribe, as it's really helpful for the channel growth.